Good afternoon everybody and welcome. Welcome to Crafty Clegg's Creations. My name is Jeanette and I'm coming to you today from the northwest of England where I live with my husband Timothy and our little dog Zach. Today is Friday the 16th of September 2022 and it's been a while since I've podcast to be fair. It's probably going on to five weeks now. Um, there's been no particular reason other than it's been the summertime, we have had um, a few days out with family, Tim and I have had a few days out, I've been and sat, house sat and dog sat for my daughter again with my little granddaughter Lola and yeah it's just been quite a busy past few weeks. Um, I am suffering a little bit with my hands. I mean, you probably won't be able to tell, but they're quite swollen and quite sore at the moment. And so my crafting is taking a little bit of a back seat. I'm not sure what started all this, whether it's too much crafting. My mother did have arthritis in one of her hands. So whether she's it's, you know, been passed down to me, I don't know. But yeah, I tend to after have a couple of days rest after I've done a little bit of crafting so unfortunately there's not very much for me to show you there's a little bit and that's why I've come on because I wanted to just let you know you know that I'm still around that I am still crafting but just not very much at the moment I would imagine now the cooler weather is coming because it is cooler here I mean today here in the northwest it's beautiful the sun's shining and yeah, it looks beautiful out the window, but you go outside and it's definitely got a nip in the air now. You can tell that autumn is on its way. Um, let me say thank you very much to my returning subscribers. Thank you for coming back to me and welcome to any new subscribers that I have had. Uh, what else can I tell you? Right, well, I'm just going to get straight into it um, and let you know what I've been doing what I've been up to, where I've been going. I have had um, a little bit of crafting time. I have had a little bit of sewing time. I've done a little shop update with some really cute Halloween bags, so I'll show you that. I have had a little bit of income, but it's not arrived. I know that sounds silly, but I will explain to that to you in a little while. So without further ado, let's get on. Right, so I've made a list of the things that we've been up to. Um, I won't go into too much detail and I didn't take lots of pictures, but what pictures I have taken, you know, I will share with you and I'll pop up on the screen somewhere. Um, so days out, Tim and I had a nice day out, or oh, maybe three, four weeks ago now, we went out for lunch. We went to our local shopping centre called the Trafford Centre and that's in Manchester. And we had a really nice day out there. We did a little bit of shopping, a bit of therapeutic shopping, which was nice. We had dinner out and the weather was beautiful. So we went to this really nice ice cream parlor and we had a very, very indulgent ice cream. Um, and I, again, I did take pictures to show you, so I'll put that on the screen. So that was nice, we did that. This is like over the past, say, six weeks. Um, so we went out for ice cream and our lunch one day. Um, then another day in the summer holidays when the schools were still closed, um, we had the grandchildren a few times and one of the times that we had them, we decided that we'd take them out for the day to Jodrell Bank, which it was, it was a really, really nice day out. There's not very much to see and do unless you're interested in that kind of thing, but the girls liked it. Tim loved it. Um, and again, I'll put a picture up for you to see. Um, and if I can find, if anybody's interested, if I can find any links that you can go and have a look, I will put them in the description box for you down below. I'm sure I'll be able to find them. So we went to Jodrell Bank one day with the girls. That was nice. And the girls have stayed here quite a few nights over the summer holidays, which has been really, really nice. Our youngest granddaughter, Lola, who is 11, it's it was her first year back into senior school. But before she started back into senior school, she took, upon it, she took it upon herself, with permission from her parents, of course. She had beautiful long hair and she decided that she wanted to chop it all off and perhaps send it off to charity to make wigs for people who needed them. So that's what she did. 
which I think was extremely brave of her because she didn't just have her hair cut. She had her hair cut. <laughs> I will pop a picture in. Well, I'm saying that I will have to ask Mummy's permission first. And if she says it's OK, I will pop a picture in for of you so she can see it. So that was a big thing that happened in the summer holidays. And then Katie, Justina and Maddox came home for four days, was it? We had them here. And so we all decided that one of the days we was going to have a trip out to Blackpool. Um, Blackpool is quite local to us. It's not far. It's only a 40 minute drive and we don't go very often. But Katie, as a child, for her birthday, which is today, by the way, um, she used to like to go through the Blackpool lights. So we used to drive through Blackpool lights um, when it was a birthday. Will you just bear with me one second? I've shut the door and the dog is outside barking to come in. I won't be a second. Sorry about that, I'm back now and I've let the little nuisance in. This is my little Shih Tzu, Zach. He is an old, old man, as you can see. He's nearly 15 now. Um, just hold on, I'll put him down. Be careful. Um, yeah, he's nearly 15 now and quite an old man. But very demanding, as you probably heard. You woof at that door and you let me in or I'll kick up a fuss. But other than that, he's a good dog. Anyway, I digress back to our family out, uh, family day out. So yeah, we all went to Blackpool, which was lovely. And we did, we went on the Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which I, for some mad reason, decided life's too short and I was going to go on every ride. Oh my goodness. I come off some rides feeling a little bit... Hmm. delicate if you like there were some some that I just should never have gone on I'm too old my bones aren't as healthy and fit as they used to be it just wasn't for me but because the whole family was there and everybody was getting excited you get blown away you know kept blown away carried away with it all don't you and so I decided that I was going to go on but yeah I won't be doing that again but we had a lovely day out, so we had a full day on, on in Blackpool and then we finished off with an evening meal of a traditional fish and chips, um, which again was beautiful. Not had fish and chips for such a long time, so that was nice. Um, and again, I have took a picture, so I will pop it in here for you to see, um, of, of us all on the, on the pleasure beach. So we did that. Um, like I said to you before, my youngest granddaughter started senior school over the past couple of weeks, which she's still settling in. Um, I think it comes as a bit of a shock to her, which I think it must do to most. I know it did to mine. My Katie wasn't too bad, but my son did not settle in at all for some time. Um, but yeah, she's doing okay. So that was that. And like I say, today is my daughter Kata, it's her 37th birthday today. <laughs> and Tim and I was only talking the other day saying, we cannot believe, because Tim's children are almost the same age as mine. And we cannot believe that Tim and I both have, a, well, he has a son, I have a daughter who's 37 years old. And my son, my, our youngest son, is just 34 years old. I just cannot believe my children are that old. Where did that time go? So yeah, um, so yeah, happy birthday, darling, if you're watching. I hope you have a lovely day and a spoilt. I'm sure you will be. Um, yeah, and enjoy your day. So really, other than that, uh, you know, like I say, when I, when I say other than that, we've had a really nice summer break with the children. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. And now it's, yeah, everyone's back to work, back to school, and it's Tim and I now back to our, you know, normal routine. And that has been the past few weeks, really. I've had a couple of doctor's appointments, and as has Tim, I have had my hair cut. And, well, you can't really tell because it's still quite long here. I've always had long hair. I've always had a bob to here. And I've decided that I want to try and grow it again. So I had all the back cut off because the back was all out of shape. So she said, we're going to have to, you know, try and grow it all. So I'm just sort of pre-warning everybody that over the past 12 months, or yeah, oh no, not the past, over the next 12 months, um, you might look at me and think, God, you know, it's looking a bit uh, tattered. So I do apologise, but I'm trying to grow my hair. <laughs> so that's that. Um... Yeah, I've got nothing else to tell you.
We've all been very, very quiet here, really, other than the days out. Uh, I have been doing some crafting on my paper crafting, and I have now opened, um, started a new channel, The Journaling Chronicles. And again, if I can find a link to it, I will put it down below if you'd like to go over and have a look. It's not very professional, not like some of the ones that, I'm, that I follow. Oh my goodness, they are wonderful. But each time I make a new journal or make more ephemera and things like that, I am getting better. But I don't want to chat about that on here because I have got a separate channel for that. So what shall we start with? Shall we start with what I'm making? I think we will. So the first thing that I'm making, and again, I haven't got a pattern for it because it's on my iPad. I will put a picture in, but it's the autumnal wreath from Lucy at Attic 24. And it's not in a bag. I've just got it in this box, this lid of a box that I had because it's just easier that way. Oh, excuse me. And I'll show you the things that I have made already. Uh, to be fair, if I really got my mind to it, I could probably have this finished over the weekend, which I might do. Um, I am using Stylecraft DK on a four millimeter hook. I'm, I'm doing exactly as it says on the pattern. Um, I have made other things but with what it says on the pattern I mean the colours and the um, hook size I'm using a clover hook so I've made can you see that you might not be able to see that so I've made four maple leaves that's the first one I got this off I think the tutorial is on Lucy does link it to the tutorial and I can't remember what the lady's called. Berry, berry crochet. I can't remember, but if you go, I will put the link to this in the description box below. And so if you go over to Lucy's channel, Attic24, you will find all the details that you need if you fancy making this. So that's another maple leaf. So I've done a brown, um, a rust. Oh, I love this colour. This is um, like... Um, I want to say mustardy yellow, but isn't that a beautiful colour? So I've done one of those. I've done like a reddish one. All autumnal colours, I think. And then I've done like a burnt orange. But don't they look, let me get them together for you. Don't they look beautiful together? These are my kind of colours for autumn. Can you see that? Isn't it lovely? So put me head out of the way. So them, I've made them. So them are finished. Then I've made lots of these different leaves. You do them all in different colours. I've done that one. So we've got two of those, have we? Hold on a sec. Yeah, we've got two of those colours. And I've got two of this. Then we've got two of this colour. Mm. Two of this colour. Two of this. And then one each of them. I think I've got to do about another four or five of these. I'm doing exactly the same amount as, as Lucy did in the pattern. And then these, um, oh, I can't remember what these are called. Acorn leaves, are they? I'm not sure. So this, them. So I've made two of those. And I'm all out. Two of those. I need to make more of them. Them are what I'm really short of. And then these are the acorns. And again, they're really difficult to show you, but I'll hold one up so you can perhaps, that's a little acorn. I've done that color. So we've got two in that color. And then I've done this one. And then I followed a different tutorial um, by the same lady that I, cop I did the maple leaf from, but it's turned out, look how big that one is. And then there's like this little thing on the end. I don't know what that is and I don't 
open it if I like it. I am going to put it on, oops, oh yeah, the cup rem is removable off this one, but you could, you know, put a few tacks on it and tack it down. Um, but yeah, I am going to use that one because it's made and it's a shame not to. Um, I've done a few berries. Can you see that? Let me put my head out of the way. So I've made four berries. I need to make another four. And then I need to make some little berry leaves. And then I found a tutorial. Well, I didn't. My daughter-in-law found this tutorial. So I've made a couple of acorns to go on. I think I might make another one. I don't know what made me do it in that colour. This is Stylecraft and that's Mushroom. But I, I, I'm trying to use what I've got rather than go out and buy more. Um, and then I found this, which I think this is the better colour. So I think I might make a brown one in this. But I, again, I'm going to use them all. So that's what I'm in the middle of making. And that's going to go on my fireplace. And I got this idea um, because I hadn't seen it on Lucy of Attic 24. I hadn't seen it on a, a blog because I've not been on for a while. But my daughter-in-law had made one. And she'd bought some lights and wrapped, wrapped, wrapped lights around them and put them over the fireplace. Oh, and it was stunning. It was really, really nice. So that's what I'm hoping to do. And I've got, I'm going to sort all my autumnal things out. I've got some crocheted pumpkins. I've got a big felt pumpkin that I made. Um, yeah, I'm going to next week, at tail end of September, I think I'm going to put all my autumnal decorations up. So I'm hoping that that's going to be finished for them. But yeah, I'm keeping it in my box lid of, this was a kit from um, a crochet, little box of crochet. Um, I bought this, oh, I think it was last year. Was it last year or the year before? Um, actually from a shop. Um, but I still haven't done it. Anyway, so that's that what I'm, I'm, I'm working on. Um, the next thing that I'm working on is a pair of socks pair of socks you say I hear you say a pair of socks now again I can't remember who this lady is or what the pattern's called because it's on my iPad but I will put a picture of it and the name on the screen and the link down below um it's in one of my oh I made this for me I couldn't resist it's in this is one of the bags that's in my shop well actually I don't know if there's any more of these left in the shop um I, I wasn't going to I wasn't going to have this I was going to do a little patchwork one for me but when I'd done it and I, I saw it I thought I'm, I'm having it I'm having this I love it so this is this year's um autumnal bag for me and I put some stitch markers on there like that that's a little laser wooden laser etched pumpkin that Tim's made we've got those in the shop and then I found a little tiny pumpkin stitch marker just for decorative use really more than anything else. Isn't it lovely? And then it's got this really nice, rich olive green on the inside. Anyway, so what I am making is a crocheted pair of socks. Let me get it out of the bag. And I cannot believe I've never made a pair of crocheted socks before because A, you can do them in double knit. I know you can, you can knit a pair of socks in double knit but you can crochet them in double knit. They are super quick, they're super cosy, and I love them. And I know what they're called, they're called the Duvet Day Socks, and I thought these will be perfect for the winter months. We all know that <laughs> rising bills, they just, well, ours has just gone crazy, and it's just gonna get worse at the end of next month. So. I just said to Tim, we need to do something to help ourselves stay warm, still have heating on, but I'm one of those, me, I don't know if anybody else is the same, I have the heating on all the time in the winter, don't worry about the bill, I don't care, I want to be warm, but it's getting that way where I have to care, you know, and if I want to be warm, then I'm going to have to make things to help me be warm. I mean, don't get me wrong, we're still going to have the eating on, but I would probably have it on from six in the morning when I got up till 11 at night when I go to bed, where we probably won't do that. We'll have to have, you know, we'll have to have it on in intervals, I would imagine. Anyway, I digress again, don't I? Can't you tell I've not spoke to you for a while? 
um, I'm telling you all the ins and outs of everything. Um, so these are my duvet day socks. Are they not fabulous? I don't know why I haven't got them on a sock blocker because I have got sock blockers, but I just don't know where they are. Anyway, never mind. These are my duvet day socks and they are super duper easy and quick to make. I absolutely love them. Um, it's This is the little ribbon at the top. And this is a front, I think the ribbon is done using a front post double crochet. Or it might be a back post double crochet, I'm not sure. Um, it's a paid for pattern, so obviously I don't want to tell you too much. Um, I will leave the link for this down below. And I bought the yarn from the lady who I bought the pattern from. So it's the actual yarn that the pattern is made in. Um, so I finished one. And I did start the other one and wanted to finish it in the night because I was dead excited. But my hands are hurt, were starting to hurt me and I had to have a rest. So I got that far with my second one. And literally, I cast... I, it is cast on with crochet, isn't it? Yeah, I know it's cast on with knitting, but I think it is the same with crochet. So I cast on the toe as Tim was cooking dinner and putting dinner out so I finished the toe and then had dinner washed the dishes took the dog for a walk and come back and literally with my cup of tea I did that and then my hand started hurting so I thought well and I'm, I'm just going to have to do what I can when I can I am going to go and see the doctor next week and see what he says and I know what he's going to say that I should stop crafting but I don't know as if I can. I don't know. It's been killing me to sit there at night time. And I have had to do this a few times with nothing to do. No knitting, no crocheting. I have started reading again. I used to read an awful lot of books before, oh, many, many years ago. I used to be really, really avid reader. Silly, sloppy books. Nothing too heavy. I always liked a really good love story. And I wouldn't mind, but they always start and end the same and the middle bits always dramatic but you know that's how it is so yeah i have been reading some books just sloppy love story books um but if you told me i couldn't crochet on or knit well i don't know I, I yeah i don't know i'm not even thinking about it until i've seen him so that's how far i've got i've done one and that little bit and i've used the um tulip is that what it's called? Yeah. And they're done on 3.5 millimetre. And for the heel, toe and cuffs, I've used sub a Sublime Extra Fine Merino Wool, a DK. In fact, I think I've got a little, some left. Yeah. So that's what I've used for the heel, toe and cuff. And then for the actual sock, I've used this and it's from a company called So Happy Cre Creative Creative, and it's 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon, 225 per 100 grams. And it was a set, there's the, if you want to have a look, and I bought the, the pattern from the same lady. And again, I will put a link to her Etsy shop down below. Um, and it was it was really affordable. I can't remember how much it was. I can't remember if it was twelve pounds. I think it was either twelve or thirteen pounds, and you got what you needed in here, apart from what you need for your heel toe and cuffs. But she did ask me. She said, "If you do need some undyed yarn, let me know." And you know, she, I think she sells it. But I already had that, and she, she advised me to use something like that because I've actually I actually spoke to her. So yeah, I was really, really pleased. So I can see that I will definitely be making more of these. I just love the variation of the colour. Look at that. And I was on my Facebook page, oh, maybe two or three days ago. And I'm on a group called hmm, Yarn Snobs. And so I purchased another three skeins of um, double knit to make another pair. 
Um, my granddaughter wants a pair. I'm going to do a pair for my daughter and my daughter-in-law. Yeah, so they all want them. So I'm really pleased because dead enjoyable. I really loved it. And I feel pleased, so pleased with myself that I've actually found a sock that I actually really like doing. I find it really easy. Yeah, I just love it. So that is one of my works in progress when my hands allow me in my new Halloween bag. Even Tim said, oh, that's a nice little bag. So that means something, doesn't it? When he's, when he's saying he likes it, usually he just puts the drawstrings in for me and puts the knots on the end. So yeah, that's my second work in progress. Um, let me just take off here. That, that. Oh, right, my next thing. So my last working project, in progress rather, or in the making, is in my bag that my friend from Stitches and Jacks made me. This is what Karen made me from Stitches and Jacks. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that we lost our queen this year, or this week, I should say. Oh, can't you tell I've not podcast for a while. Um, yes, we lost the queen. Not this week, last week. It was Friday, was it? Was it Thursday or Friday? I can't remember now. And whether you're a royalist or not, that doesn't matter. Somebody's lost. Their mum, the grandma, their aunt, you know. And it, she did a grand job at looking after us all. Um, I don't really want to go into it too much because it's not everybody's cup of tea and I don't want to upset anybody. But yeah, I just wanted to make you aware that, uh, you know, to pay my respects really. Anyway, so it's in my queenie bag. This is what I've been calling it, the queenie bag, because, you know, Karen and I do like the queen. As you know, we've both made the, the toft queen here and I made another queen up there. Anyway, I digress. So I keep digressing, don't I? So the next thing is in this bag and I'll get it all out for you. In fact, you'll have seen it. I don't need to get all them out. And it is, and again, I haven't got a pattern, so I will put a picture up. It is my Stephen West honeycomb shawl. And this is how far I have got. And I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Because like many of you will probably know, I am not the quickest or the best knitter in the world. I can knit my toys and I've knitted a couple of jumpers, but I'm so slow. I don't know why it takes me so long to knit anything, but it really, really does. And has done for some time now. Um, I can do a bit of this every now and then with my hands. But again, it's yeah, it, everything's like on a little bit, bit of a go slow at the moment but that's okay. So it is the Stephen West honeycomb shawl and it, I have done, how many repeats have I done? I've done one, two, two and a half repeats, which for me, I think that's really good, but I love the colour, absolutely love the colour. It will definitely need a block. Um, the yarn that I'm using is a 75% superwash merino and a 25% nylon and Timothy and I both dyed this and um, this is a colour palette we put together. The the burnt orange here I'm not going to lie I think I would have preferred it a little bit darker but we're no experts at dyeing yarn you know we do it because we love it it's fun and we love to experiment and so yeah it wasn't quite what I wanted but I am actually thrilled with how it's coming out. Um, it's done on, I've got it on a circular. I think these are my Chiagoo. Yeah, um, Chai, I'm using a Chiagoo 3.75 millimeter needles. And these, if I'm going to do any knitting at all, are my favorite needles, I love them. They're quite expensive. Um, so yeah, if you do need them, it's unless you're very lucky and you can buy a full set, you do have to. I have collected them over the past couple of years. Got quite a few of them now um, for when I do do some knitting. I do more mainly crocheting nowadays, to be fair. But yeah, that's what they've done on. And this is the main colour. Yeah, I would have preferred it to be a little bit darker, a little bit more rustic, rusty, 
you know, like a more, I don't know how to explain what I mean, like a golden rusty, yeah, it's a bit orange. And it looks a lot more orange than it actually is there. And I would have preferred it a little bit darker. But, you know, like I say, Tim and I are no experts in the uh, dyeing department. So we did it. We had a really fun day doing it. And it's going to be nice when it's finished. And I can say, well, I made this and we dyed this yarn as well. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's the only things that I'm actually working, that I'm actively working on at the moment. I mean, I've got a basket down here that's got lots of things in. But unfortunately, I've not touched them. Well, for some time, really. Um, yeah, my paper crafting has sort of... I wouldn't say it's taken over because it definitely hasn't. But I, I, I do come up here every now and then and potter around. And once I start pottering around, I can be up here for three days. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but I, all my housework goes by the by. I don't, I, I don't go out for my walks. It's, it's not good. It's not the most healthiest of my hobbies it's like tim said you sit down to paper craft you sit down to knit and crochet you go anywhere you know you sit down in one of your groups with your knitting yeah um so i i have got a bit carried away with my paper crafting but i like it i really like it anyway what do you want me to show you next oh i'll show you I've got, believe it or not, it's ridiculous. I've got two finished items in all that time that I haven't podcast. And wait till you see the first one. It's absolutely ridiculous. I I don't know if you can see. Is it still up there? Well, you can't really see it. But in between my crochet hooks here and this suitcase here is a tiny, tiny suitcase, which I wanted to turn into a little bedroom for something that I was making it's still there I've not even cut out the foam for it the fabric nothing nothing but like I say we have been busy and I have to go out and have my family days out you know some things are more important aren't they that I can do that in the winter whereas the family days that we had out oh they was wonderful so anyway so the first thing that I finished so you see this you'll be like is that all you've done but then you'll understand why in a little while. So the first thing that I finish is Gus the Crocheted Piglet. Absolutely cute as anything. Cute as a button. Excuse me. And here he is. There you go. That's Gus. He's blowing out, isn't he? Um, dead easy to make. The only thing I struggled with a little bit if you can see, he's got trotters. Obviously, he's a pig. Here and here and on the bottom there. Now, this was a little bit, I wouldn't say difficult to do, but because it's so tiny, it was hard doing the short rows. But I did eventually do it. And here he is. So, Gus is going to live in this basket, in this um, little mini suitcase, when I get round to finishing it. So, that's what I made this for. It was made on quite a small needle, if I remember rightly. Let me have a look in the pattern. Oh, no, it wasn't. Well, it said to use a 3.25. I didn't. I used a 2.25. I never, ever use anything other than two and a half for my amigurumi. I crochet everything in that, no matter what it says. Um, because that's how I get my best tension. So, it, but in the pattern, it does tell you to use a three and a half. And I used, this will come as no surprise, Sheepies Katona, but it did come in a kit. So it came in a little box, a cute little box, with three balls of this, the pattern, some stuff in the eyes, and a little bit of thread for his nose. So we've got these little tiny eyes and little tiny ears. Oh, and look at this. Look at that tail. Is that not just adorable? <laughs> so, I was quite pleased with him when I finished him. But, yeah. It's not very big, is it? And it's not a lot to show for when you think that I've only got two items that I'm f I've finished. I'm so behind with my um, tuft birds. I've got August and September's to do. 
and if I don't get a move on, I'll have Octobers as well. But I am determined to get the 12 birds up on the tree at Christmas. Um, so, yeah, that's something else I'm going to have to do. And they'll get done. And, you know, if they don't get done, it doesn't matter. There's always next year. But I would really, really like to get them done. When I bought the book from Toft, I got a free patch because I bought it from from Toft, off Toft's website. I got a free patch and a free pattern with all the the 12 birds of Christmas, but little miniature ones. And I am very tempted to finish the rest of the year in the miniature ones and then obviously for next year, do the bigger ones. I'm just gonna have to see how my hands are. Um, because yeah, there's, you know, I can't, it, it just hurts too much. When, what, once, when they start hurting, I have to, yeah. And talking about sore hands, I was watching uh, the lovely Elise from Les Petites Saint Crochet and she's just brought out a really good video over on her YouTube about pain from crocheting. Um, nip over and watch it, it's really, really good. I'll leave a link for her um, YouTube channel down below. So Gus the Piglet is the first thing I'd finished and then the second thing I'd finished and you'll see why um, this is the why I've only done these two things because this kept me really busy and as you can imagine um, again I don't want to keep harping on about it because that's not what you're here for but because I have got a bit sore hands at the moment I really struggled with this this was definitely a labour of love not because it was difficult but because it was painful but I said I would do it and I have so it is I've made Nicola the flamingo and this is for a friend who gets married next month and I believe that it's for a gift for one of her bridesmaids who must be into flamingos. So it's a bridesmaid gift. Um, and so I've made it for her. And here it is. Hold on a second, let me get it because it's quite big. Um, I, the crown still needs attaching, which I will do before I send it off. I was going to send it off yesterday, but I, I thought, you know what, with me podcasting tomorrow and it's bank holiday on Monday, I'll send it on Tuesday and it'll get there first class. So here is Nicola, <laughs> the flamingo. Isn't she just adorable? Look at that. I absolutely love her. Her wings, I love this feathered look. And then you could actually put, in the pattern it did say that you could put wire in the neck. Now, I haven't done anything like that because I don't know how old the child is or if it's a child it's going to. I didn't know anything and I didn't want to keep my in Nicola because she was preparing for a wedding. So I just went ahead and used plenty of stuffing. The legs, look at them knobbly knees, look at that foot. Oh, I love it. And when it's sat down, you this is what I did when I took a picture. If you are seeing this on my Instagram page, I sat him on my fireplace or sat her and I sat her down and crossed her legs like that. Oh, it looks so cute. So, yeah, I mean, this did take me quite some time. Um, you can The way it's constructed is brilliant. And again, it's a paid for pattern, so I, I'm not going to go into too much detail because that's very unfair. Um, but it's a really, really good pattern, well constructed, a little bit fiddly in times because you have to work with the body and then add the neck so you've got all this and it's hanging down everywhere and yeah, so it is a little bit fiddly but I think well worth um, the effort. These are a little cheeks and this is a little beak. Um, as you can all probably see, I used Sheepy's Katona. No, no, sheepy stone wash. Um, in fact, I've used it for it all, yeah. I've used it for her legs, her body, everything. Um, the only thing I didn't use that wasn't sheepies is the crown, which is, um, the crown is Rico. Rico Amagurumi, that is. Um, and it's just um, one of the small 
balls they do do a gold and a silver so that's what that is so I'm just going to stitch that into place before I send it off and then I'm going to post that off on Monday I hope she likes it um, like I say it was definitely a labour of love I would really love to have one of these myself um, but whether I'll ever do one or not I probably will eventually but yeah I absolutely love it but I have got my flamingo to do from Toft if you remember last time I showed you I'd purchased um, when I got some wool to do my other sorry it won't sit up when I'd got some wool to do my other birds to finish off my 12 um, birds for Christmas, I did treat myself to a flamingo um, kit that still hasn't got done. Um, so that's it. That's all I've got to show you, which is most un unusual for me because normally, you know, I am a bit of a, I like to get going and, but never mind, it doesn't matter. I will tell you now, so that's my, me work in progress my finished objects so next yeah I will tell you about my incoming um <clears throat> I have purchased recently two different items that are both advent based so you can imagine I haven't got them here they haven't arrived yet my first one I purchased at the Toft Advent. Well, Tim did. Tim bought it for me. And I've had that as my Christmas gift, which I did last year. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was such a fun thing to do. And so as soon as it came out, I said to Tim, I know it's only whatever it was, July, August. I can't remember now. But can I have my Christmas present now? Please order this quickly before it sells out. Anyway, I managed to get one. Um, so I'm very excited about that. This here, this green set of drawers here was last year's toft advent box oh it was just wonderful um oh i just loved it i was thrilled with it if you want to have a look at that i did a little snippet of it every day on last was it last yeah last year's vlogmas so if you just want to go and have a quick look head on over to some of the vlogmases from last year and have a look brilliant loved it so i'm really really looking forward to that and then I have started over um, oh past few days, maybe three or four days, I've had a little chat to a fellow podcaster. Um, oh, hold on, I'm being shouted. Bear with me one sec. I'm back. I think you forgot I was podcasting. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So over the past few days, I've been chatting to a lovely lady called Lindsay. And she has a podcast um, on YouTube called Samuel Makes. I don't know if it's Samuel Makes This or Samuel Makes. I will link it down below and I will let you know what it's actually called on the screen. So I was chit-chatting to her and, and I didn't realise that this lady had had, you know, a podcasting channel. So I went over and I was catching up with her. Oh, and in one of her episodes, she made an advent, an embroidery advent, that you just did a bite size every day. And it literally is a bite size, very doable for every day. And I went back and started watching all her episodes, you know, like us, us podcasters or us viewers do. I get a little bit obsessed with things and I have to watch them one after the other after the other. Um, and I saw the final one that would, she'd finished and it's not a massive, it's not a massive thing. You can either make it into a little cushion, a little wall hanging. I think I will probably make mine into a wall hanging. Um, but like I say, it's it's um, an embroidery advent and it's sent out at the end of October, I think. And you get information or a little bit of the pattern that you do every day you get all your threads you get you get everything everything that you need in the kit I don't know if you get a hoop I'm not sure about that because I've, I've I've not seen that but I mean hoops are you know ready available at many many places so that's another advent that I've got and um that's it um it was from a company called Stitcher Doodle. And again, I'll put it on the screen below and leave the link down below if anybody wants it. Because if you don't want to buy the whole kit, you can actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think you can actually buy just the pattern. 
I think you can. I don't know if you buy the canvas with it printed on. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You'll have to have a look at that. I did, I, I did think about maybe just buying the pattern, but because it was the first time I've ever done it, I thought what I'll do is I'll, I'll treat myself to the actual kit. Um, and then it gives you an idea of what you need, what you get in it. So for next year, if I love it and I want to do it again, so for next year, I can start collecting the colour scheme of the flosses that I need and I probably just need to buy the, the pattern. So yeah, so that's that's my only incoming really. I've been really, really good. I have, no, I shouldn't say that. I have bought a couple of balls of yarn, but nothing, um, nothing exciting really. I've bought some style craft to do a little bit more of me garland with and i've bought four or five balls of style craft aran that i'd like to knit um a cowl with that I've, I've tried it once before and i don't know what happened i tried it once before and it didn't i didn't i ended up not using it or not doing it um so and i found the pattern again so i want to try that again so i thought rather than buy really expensive yarn i'm going to get some style craft and see how i go with that but other than, you know, style craft, there's not really much that I've bought. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it. I absolutely think that's it. I think this is probably one of the shortest podcasts I've ever done. Um, I will do now my little shop update. Um, we have recently put some more needle minders in the shop. And again, I haven't got them here because I can't show them to you they're too difficult to show you um and we have got some new stitch markers which tim has done for me which are really fun we've got some pumpkins and we've got some balls of yarn and we'll put pictures up for you to see those are really really fun um and yeah a, a few bags which i'll show you now some well most of them are halloween themed but they're more autumnal themed i think um First of all, I did a couple of these, and this is real. Again, I, I, I don't use any fabrics that I don't like. I know that sounds ridiculous because not everybody has the same taste, but I think when you're making things for your little shop, you've got to like them yourself, haven't you? Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit of a monkey that way. I think, mm, I like that, I'll do that. Anyway, so I've made this little cat one. Isn't that fabric lovely? It's just little black cats with black lining and a black drawstring and a black cord and I've put just a little d-ring on here and it's got one of our if you can see that one of our laser etched pumpkins and then just a little white cat I didn't have a black cat else I'd have put a black cat on so I did a drawstring one with that and this one's exactly the same only with a zipper it's exactly the same um, inside black lining oh let me get this right for you yeah it's black lining black zipper and cats on the outside same size and everything only on this one there is a pumpkin and then a laser etched there you go laser etched pumpkin I'll just show you inside and a black lining I thought that was really fun because the thing is, they don't scream out Halloween, do they? You could have these for autumn bags. And that's what I liked about this next one. I really like this because although it is a little bit halloween -y, um, it can you could use this all the way through. This is another one of my drawstrings. And this has got some Moda Grunge for your drawstring channel. And then a really nice soft pink. And again, I've put a D-ring on here with... A little um, wizard's hat and a laser etch pumpkin. Black drawstrings, perfect size for scarves, mittens, hats, socks, you know, all your winter mitts really. Um, it's got little toadstools on here, little pumpkins, butterflies, bats. Oh, I love it. Really nice. That's um, a Dashwood Studio fabric. And then there was a, a, some of the fabric left over and I thought, well, you know what? This would be ideal for amigurumi. So I did another one, exactly the same, but this is just a Moda um, grunge spot with another pink. And that one's got, let me have a look. 
It's really hard to see that when they twist round like this. That one has got the pumpkin and a little enamel bat. And again, black drawstring with the um, diamond knot on the end. And then this one, I love this one. This is just a simple drawstring bag, but I thought that's all it needed. I love those mushrooms, toadstools, whatever you want to call them. And it's got turquoise for the drawstrings and the same with the lining and black drawstring cards. And then I had a little bit of that fabric left over with the butterflies and the bats and things and I'd done a little bit of hand embroidery and thought I am making this little tiny pouch. So we've got this little tiny pouch. Actually, it's not that tiny. I think it's about nine inches wide by about seven. So you could probably fit a pair of socks in that or mittens, to be fair. It's a little bit big, I think, for a notions pouch. But having said that, if you're anything like me, I have hundreds of notions. So, yeah, I mean, I'd need two of them. And then on the back, it's just um, a plain 100% um, What's this? Linen, just a linen with a pink coordinating zip. We've got that one. And then last but not mean, no means least, we've got this one. And again, this is all a bit patchworker. It's a mixture of quilting fabrics. So we've got black and white stripes. This is Moda Grunge. This is Dashwood Studios. This is just a plain Moda solid. Um, and then on the back, it's just linen again, 100% linen, black zip. What have we got inside? Ooh, nice. Nice white on white inside there. And your stitch markers. Let's have a look what your stitch markers are on here. Get them twisting round again. We've got a... Oops. <laughs> Bear with me laser etch pumpkin and then a pumpkin head with a little hat on so that's my little shop update um quite a few things in the shop at the moment i have had um quite a busy week in um in my craft room i've really enjoyed this week trouble is when you're making bags i get a bit carried away i cut out more bags than i could ever sell and then i've got them piled up i've even made just recently some um, Valentine's bags. Can you believe that for next year? <laughs> I've got Harry Potter bags cut out. I'm terrible. I really am bad. But I'm going to have a rest now. I'm going to have a, a week off and I'm going to try and rest my hands, get some more crocheting done if I can, and maybe a little bit of uh, paper crafting. Who knows? So I'm sorry it's been such a long time since I saw you. And this it's not much to show for the time, is there? I cannot believe I only had two finished items, but there you go. Um, I hope you are all keeping safe and well. Um, things are definitely going back to normal now, aren't they? Everybody's back to school. Everybody's back at work. And yeah, life is just carrying on as normal. And so with that, I'm going to go and leave you. And hopefully I won't be gone as long and more have more things to show you next time. And so until next time, take care and stay safe. Bye bye. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to Crafty Clegg's Creations. My name is Jeanette Clegg, and today I'm coming to you from the northwest of England, where I live with my husband, Timothy, and how a little dog, Zach. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> 